Hey everyone, Itay Manero here, and in this video, we're going to have a look at the brushes and illustrations I made during the third week of Brushtober 2022. So let's jump right into it. Brushtober is a special event where I create a Procreate brush and an illustration with that brush every day through October. You can see my daily progress on my Instagram or Twitter accounts, so make sure to follow through the links below. If you want to know how you can get this brush set for free for a limited time, check out the info in the description of this video for all the details. For day 16, I started this batch of brushes with a rough and painterly brush that interestingly has a clean squared shape to it. I call this one Dry Roller. For this illustration, I saw this photo referenced by Ahmed Zayn, but I thought I'm giving it a spin to the idea and paint the fish meeting with an unexpected stranger inside the fishbowl. First I focused on painting the background, the rock, and the fishbowl. Using the reference for this part of the illustration was very useful because painting reflective glass can be very challenging. Then I deviated from the reference by adding my own made up elements. I started by adding the skull and bones in the bottom of the fishbowl. Then I painted the fish, looking at the skull. The idea was that the fish would look surprised at this unexpected discovery. At the end I added a question mark in a speech bubble to show the fish's confusion. I also decided to add this graphic detail of duplicating some of the layers, painting them black and moving them a little to the side to create this drop shadow effect. On day 17, I came up with this brush that has a nice fabric-like texture to it. The texture is more or less obvious depending on how much pressure you use, and it also works great when blending using the smudge tool. I call this one rough fabric. For this quick painting, I used this photo reference by Jude Infantini as a starting point. I decided that I wanted to paint these peppers in simplified boxy shapes. This sort of stylization is super fun to do, and it actually feels very freeing since you don't need to be so perfect or so accurate. I started by painting the background and defining the main shapes. Then I used alpha lock in these layers to be able to paint inside those shapes. This made the process of rendering the pepper super easy and quick. I really enjoyed using this brush, it felt amazingly responsive. For day 18, on a search for a different brush than the ones that I normally do, I worked on this one that I called Flat Spray. The strokes with this brush are super edgy and clean, while having a very fine and subtle spray paint texture. The characteristics of this brush inspired me to paint a very graphic and stylized tree, while exploring a nice color palette mainly made of greens and yellows. I first painted the background. And then I dedicated some time to define the basic shape for the tree trunk, with special attention to the disposition of the branches. I also painted the general shape for the leaves as a whole. Then I started to work on the rendering inside those shapes, going from broad strokes at first and slowly getting smaller with the brush to work on the details. On 
natural blend is my brush for day 19. I really love this one. It seems so simple, yet it feels so good to paint with. The colors blend super nicely when using the paint and the smudge tools with this brush. I decided to paint one of my signature skulls using the color scheme from this Brushtober edition. For my reference, I used a small 3D printed skull I have at home. First I did a very minimal black ink drawing of the skull, switching between the paint and the eraser tools to refine the lines and features. Then I used this limited color palette to render the skull. I feel like this week I was working a lot on my way of stylizing my art, since for this rendering, I also tried to think in terms of chunky shapes of color. I had a blast doing this little painting. For day 20, I made this brush with the idea of being very fun to use. This brush called Color Shifter does what its name says. It shifts color randomly with each stroke. The variation is not huge, so it will always stay within the range of similar colors to the one you have selected. This is great, because when painting, you don't normally want your colors to drastically change with each stroke you make. As for this illustration, I had this idea of painting a cute little ghost, chilling over a bed of autumn leaves. I started by painting a very autumnal sky with yellows and oranges and then I gave shape to the ghost. I focused on making the sheet look like it is actually hanging to give it a bit of believability. Then I added some sunglasses to make the ghost look cooler. I also felt like giving this little guy some thick eyebrows and a colorful scarf. I also painted the bed of leaves. The color shifting in this brush was great for that task because it automatically changed the color of each leaf I was painting within a nice range of oranges, reds and yellows. I decided to give the ghost the classic ball with a chain. And then I felt like changing the color of the sky and adding a few fluffy clouds. On day 21, I made this brush that behaves like a nice inking pen when using a small size but that has this crazy grainy texture when pressing harder, especially when used in a big size. I call this one Rough Dreamer. For this illustration, I drew inspiration from this photo by Malek B, and I thought on doing something weird and dreamy. I drew this guy's head, holding his breath underwater, and I thought it would be fun to give him a really nice hair, floating with crazy curls. I started by doing a rough sketch, so I could visualize better what I was going for. Once I got it, I lowered the opacity of this sketch and started refining my drawing on a new layer. I painted the hair directly with orange on a layer underneath my ink lines. And then I continued coloring the rest of the drawing. I tried to use a small size of the brush when I wanted to have clean strokes, but pumped up the size when I wanted some of that rough texture to really show up. I also decided to color the lines themselves, except for the ones in the goggles. 
finally, I added some playful bubbles and a bit of color in the background. The last brush for this week is called Deep Sea Coral. This one has a really nice and enjoyable texture. It reminded me of corals, hence the name. It also has some really cool blending capabilities. For this doodle, I wanted to do something I never do, which is to paint an abstract piece. I wanted to focus on building a nice combination of brush strokes and colors. I actually found this process super relaxing and interesting. It was all improvisation, as you can tell. I really liked how the blues and whites played with the oranges, reds and purples, and the peculiar texture of this brush added a sweet touch. This painting was super fun to do. And that's it for today. These are the 7 brushes I did this week for my Brushtober Challenge 2022. Let me know in the comments which of these brushes was your favorite so far. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next video and give me a thumbs up. Also make sure to check out my Gumroad page and consider making a purchase before the end of October to get this unique brush set for free. I have tons of Procreate brush sets available and I'm sure something will suit your artistic needs. All the links are in the description below. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time.